Welcome to TradersArmy.com, defending your right to build wealth and preserve capital for generations to come. Yeah, Tuesday. It is Tuesday. It is the end of January, January 29th. Hope everybody had an absolutely amazing trading day yesterday. Welcome to the Daily Market Commentary. I am your host, Chuck Fulkerson. For those of you that are new to the channel, do me a favor, smash that notification bell, hit that subscribe button so you get the updates as they become available. For those of you that are regular subscribers, uh, hit a, give, me a, give me a like, give me a thumbs up, give me a comment, give me something uh, to let the, the YouTube computers know that you're still alive. And remember to share this channel with a friend. Uh, if you've got uh, people out there that you know that are trading that you think would appreciate this uh, this channel, make sure you let them know about it. All right, let's dive right in. So the S&P yesterday, um, we had talked about a potential area to get long uh, as price came down. Now, I was not in love with this area. This was on a 15-minute chart. Anybody remembers we were looking at this as a confirmation-style entry uh, because we'd come close to it. But notice, when we came down into it, what did it do? It blew right through. But I, I don't want to say that that level was completely a waste. And, I, and, and this is why we like confirmation style entries, because if you miss out, out on the entry, you're, you're still not hurting yourself, right? Because once it goes through that stop loss area, that trade is no longer considered valid. However, take a look at what the old area of, of, uh, of demand which then got blown, uh, blown through, turned into. It, came, it turned into a pretty nice reversal area for a trade back down. Uh, not sure how many of you have traded in that way, but oftentimes what you're going to see is that those decent turning points, if, they, if they've if they worked once, which it did work once, uh, and then the second time through it kind of based before then falling through, and the basing before the level is definitely always a clue, uh, oftentimes will act as, as supply on the on the flip side, if you will. So uh, we did get a little bit of move out of there. Now we're starting to rally up a little bit. This is off the 15-minute chart. If I move to the hourly chart, we can see that essentially we're just kind of continuing our sideways price action. Um, not a whole lot has changed when we look at our price action. On the four-hour, technically still a buyer, um, you know, but it's, it's very inconclusive. And so you know, you've got to have the right setup. You've got to have the right trades, the things that, make, that follow your rules as prices kind of coming into these, these levels and these areas. So I'm going to move down to the 15-minute chart. When I look at the 15-minute chart, we are coming really close to a potential reversal area uh, right now. Okay, coming close to a potential reversal area, all of this in here uh, uh, becomes uh, potential areas where we can see price kind of turn around. Uh, however, remember that when we're going short, we've got a slightly lower probability when the big picture is still telling us to be a buyer. Okay, so just kind of keep that area in mind. But we are coming into both of these areas up above. Now, down below at around the European market open, we started the move off of this area here. I actually like the, 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 this area down here better than I do the area up above for a short. But both are, are, valid, uh, are valid areas and valid trades, especially that we're putting in a little bit of selling pressure here on these 15-minute candles. So keep an eye on that one. Uh, the NASDAQ. So here in the NQ, we definitely uh, came down to our reversal area uh, and then popped up out of that. This was the area that we've already touched once and moved away. Uh, yesterday, I talked about if we're going to get short, the NASDAQ is the one to get short off of. Um, we, however, didn't uh, didn't fall you know, much further than we did in the S&P, and we started a little bit of a rally. Now, the NASDAQ is nowhere near the, uh, the origin of that move down. Uh, it's actually got a, a ways to run uh, before it gets to any quality areas of supply. So it's got some room to run, which makes that 15-minute S&P supply level a little bit less probable. Okay, so just keep that in mind as well, that the NASDAQ is slightly weaker, has been for the last couple of days. Uh, and so when I do look at shorts, I think the NASDAQ shorts in supply are actually better opportunities, while the S&P longs in demand are better opportunities. Moving over to crude oil. So in crude, we had set up a potential reversal trade. Price came really close to our area, was unable to come down there for a full fill, uh, and now we've started to rally back up. So as it stands for now, there's nothing really new that I want to add. Uh, we still have this area up here that was formed at the, uh, at the European market open uh, that will still act as a potential reversal if price does make it uh, back up into that region. 
Gold. So in gold, we had a huge gap up yesterday uh, in gold. Uh, we gapped up. Uh, in the uh, through this uh, through this level here and continued a very strong rally. Now, if I look at this on a four-hour chart, we've actually come above our area of supply. So that's the area that we talked about and said, listen, if we get above this this area here with it with with a little bit of basing, this could serve as a potential breakout to the upside. So we actually have, uh, for those of you that are subscribers and you look on the, the, uh, the trade log, we've actually got a, a calendar spread set out on gold that's pro that, that has hit its target. Both target one and target two will be closed out today um, on this big gap higher. I think that there's plenty of room, if you look at this on a daily, for gold to continue a, a, a bigger move. Now, you may want to wait for a bit of a pullback to give you an opportunity, but this is a pretty big gap in gold uh, that we're seeing, right? This is a, this is a pretty big gold gap, uh, and when you get a gap like that, those typically turn into gap-and-run situations. And so you may want to wait uh, for a pullback down to maybe a 15-minute area of demand, a 15-minute level, um, just not sure when that would uh, when that would come and when that would arrive. So basing here before the level on the breakout could be a chance to uh, to to follow this thing and and get the run. So look at the look at the breakout to the upside as a potential for a longer uh, a longer running position. Uh, moving over into our bond setups. So in bonds, we had a bond short uh, identified. Price came into our level. Uh, this was the confirmation style entry. So we got in, uh, it came all the way to the top, and now it's just chopped around and really done a whole lot of nothing. Hasn't really hit our stop, hasn't really made a move. Uh, so in this case, uh, you know, we're, if you follow the six candlestick rule, you know, if you, this is your entry is somewhere, you know, we, we get halfway into the level, your entry is somewhere here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. We're 19 candles into the move, and so we haven't really gotten our move. In my mind, I'm a big believer in the six candlestick rule. If it, if it tries to, if it makes entry and doesn't make its move after six candles, I'm not interested in it. So I'm gonna remove these lines and this area uh, and based on the six candlestick rule, that is one that we should no longer be waiting around for price to move. Uh, in the Aussie, so in the Aussie, we had our breakdown level below here, uh, and this trade moved out uh, for a nice little uh, nice little move. It's come back in. This actually does give you another opportunity to get short in case you missed it the first time around. So if you are short in this one, uh, then allow this one to kind of keep running. At least move your stop down to break even at this point now that we've retested this line so that you don't take any losses. So that one should continue to run for you. Uh, in the euro, we had a confirmation short set up. Uh, price came into the euro level, and then we moved away. So if I go to the 15-minute chart on this, you can see that we came into the level, uh, and then we got a little bit of basing, popped up through it. So this probably shouldn't be an entry uh, in this position, right? We came into it, but we didn't really come out of it until down here. Uh, this is really where you where you'd have an entry of some sort, but in reality, we came up above there first. So that level, once again, this is why we like confirmation entries. Allows me to, you know, not necessarily commit fully to the trade until it starts moving my direction. Uh, when I look at this on a on a one hour chart, I'm gonna go to a four hour. So when I look at this on a four hour chart, my four hour chart is telling me that I'm better off being a buyer. And I've got this uh, these upward uh, higher swing highs, higher swing lows. We are getting a pretty nice pullback here at the moment uh, on the four hour, but ultimately still going to be okay uh, as uh, as price kind of retreats back into into this region here. None of these are high quality demand areas. So for those of you that trade candle to candle style, you could get a candle to candle long somewhere coming out of this level uh, for an uh, for an opportunity. So. Canadian dollar. So in our Canadian dollar, this one was just completely wrong. Um, in our Canadian dollar, told us to be a buyer. Price came into the level. I expected this to be a limit entry to the upside. Uh, price hit that level and it moved away. However, um, we are putting in a little bit of, you know, this this is a technically a typically a breakout scenario. So if we break out below here, I think you could see price run. Down into uh, down into this region uh, as a as kind of a profit target. So that's uh, that's a potential trade that it's set up for. But unfortunately, the reversal did not come to come to fruition. 
Um, Nat Gas, for those of you that were on the live trading room on Sunday night, we talked about Nat Gas possibly getting short below the gap. Uh, the gap area is low, and, uh, and then a stop would be above the gap area is high the candle of the gap. And so we broke below, but we're not really doing anything. So not a whole lot of movement on that position. Great British pound uh, price is just chopping just above here. Uh, not a whole lot happening there. And then the Japanese yen, we're still in between our levels. So not a tremendous amount happening really on in any markets today uh, that are that are strong turning point opportunities, right? Gold being the biggest runner. Uh, but there are some individual equity positions that we had uh, entered into or taken a look at the other night that are making some significant moves. If you uh, would, you know, one of the things that's great about the market is you don't ever have to, uh, you don't ever have to, you know, just be a futures trader. There are other, there are always going to be other market opportunities out there for you to look at uh, in a uh, in the in the grand scheme of things. So if you want to learn more, go to tradersarmy.com uh, and give us uh, give us a try. We've got a uh, we've got a, a, a promo running. We're almost to the end of the month. Uh, for the month of January, the first month is only $20.19. So start your 2019 off right for only $20.19. Give it a give it a give it a go. So all right everybody, hope you're having a great day and I will be back tomorrow.